Today for EMN5, I want to talk about digoxin and the effects that it has on EKGs. This is going to be both for therapeutic levels of digoxin as well as toxicity. Patients can come in with a lot of different symptoms when they have digoxin toxicity. They can be dizzy, nauseous, vomiting, sometimes having vision changes. What I want to talk about is the different arrhythmias that they can have as well as EKG changes. Sometimes this can present as palpitations, they can even syncopize, come in unresponsive, or sometimes just having chest pain or shortness of breath. Things to look out for in your labs is hyperkalemia and also a high digoxin level. So just make sure when you're working these patients up and taking a look at their EKGs that you get a lab level of the digoxin as well as a K level. So how does digoxin affect the heart? Well, first of all, it increases the automaticity. And second, it causes a decrease in AV conduction, also known as AV block. So the result of this is going to be supraventricular tachycardias. In other words, your heart trying to go really fast has that increased automaticity. And then AV block, so your ventricle is not reacting. The EKG changes I want to talk about for therapeutic levels are the following. So everyone knows about this scooped ST segment, also known as the Salvador Dali mustache. People call it the hockey stick. There are a lot of different names that people reference for this. But just remember, it's that scooped ST segment. You can see this with therapeutic levels in any patient taking digoxin. There's also biphasic T waves, prominent U waves, flattened T waves, shortened QT segments, and a long PR. So let's look at the scooped ST. Here's an example of our wonderful Salvador Dali with his mustache and the equivalent in your EKG. You can also see it looks a little bit like a hockey stick. Whatever you want to call it, just remember Dali mustache, scooped STs. And here's an example you can see nicely in leap 2, 3, AVF, a little bit upside down here in V3 is all good examples of that scooped ST segment. Next I just want to talk about this biphasic T wave. This is also kind of known as a prominent U wave, or you can see flattening of the T waves. I don't have an example of a shortened QT or long PR. You guys all know what to look for there. Your differential for a shortened QT is digoxin and also hypercalcemia, so just keep those in mind if you see a shortened QT segment on an EKG. And we already talked about a long PR, that's from the AV block that the digitalis causes. Next, I want to talk about EKG changes in toxicity. You're going to see a lot of PVCs, sinus bradycardia, or these strange AFib rhythms that either can be very slow or very regular, AV block that we already talked about, and then VTAC. Here's an example of PVCs in a digitalis toxicity. You can see this one is in bigeminy. So you have a normal QRS, a PVC, QRS, PVC. This also happens to be an example of this very slow atrial fibrillation. So if you look at, for example, 2 and probably V4 here, we'll just show this as a close-up of it. You can see it's actually in AFib, but because of the AV conduction being so slow, that QRS really lags behind, and you can see these very slow AFib rhythm, and here it's followed by a PVC. You can also have this regular AFib. So normally you think AFib irregularly irregular. Here is the exception to the case. So you can see here in V1, very clear atrial fibrillation. However, the QRS is very, very regular, and that's because there's a third degree AV block, which results in a junctional escape rhythm. And you really need to think about digitalis toxicity when you see this rhythm. And lastly, VTAC can be an unfortunate complication of digitalis toxicity. You can see both what you would think of your normal VTAC as well as this bidirectional VTAC. Here's a close-up from a paper from Circulation 2006 where you can see up, down, up, down. You have that bidirectional VTAC. Make sure you think of digitalis toxicity. So for treatment, make sure you give poison control a call on your pharmacist. Your antidote here is going to be digibind. Anytime you have any one of these arrhythmias that you're concerned about, give them a call, get some digibind up and ready. I'm going to talk about this treatment in another lecture because it's a little more complicated and I think worth going over. So just remember, antidote, digibind, make the call early. So three to remember for EKG changes in digitalis. It affects the heart, causing increased automaticity as well as slowing of the AV node or AV block. In therapeutic levels, you can see the scooped ST Salvador Dali mustache, long PRs, and also short QT. The differential for short QT is hypercalcemia and digitalis. Toxicity, you're going to see a lot of PVCs, AV block, that very regular or slow AFib with a junctional escape rhythm, and VTAC. 
Remember to make the call early to Poison Control and get the Digifab in the ER and ready. Here's the references, and thanks again for joining us on EMN5. Look for a lecture coming soon on treatment of digitalis toxicity.